Hello everyone, today a short video about some of the frequently asked questions that we've been getting through the uh, website, uh, our YouTube channel, and uh, to answer some of your calls that we've been getting. Um, you know, the, those are repetitive, so I'm sure there are a lot more people that would benefit from answers to answer to those. So, first question was, uh, what is the best graphic card to support the three monitor type of a setup? And uh, we used to hesitate to give the answer because we're not in, in, in the business of making graphics cards, but due to the uh, experimentation um, and you know us using several different cards from different brands, we can probably give a recommendation of at least two gigabyte memory card to support three 27-inch monitors. And the reason for that is, as you can imagine, you need a lot more uh, video memory to display the graphics on three monitors versus one. So one gigabyte didn't seem to be enough. And we used to get lower frame rates, especially if you're using add-on scenery like you see here. We're sitting on the runway six right in um, Cleveland, Berkey, Berkey Lakefront. It's an airport that we fly to in real life occasionally. So uh, it's got an add-on scenery, pretty detailed, you know, the downtown area in Cleveland. So we I wanted to show you that right now with a two gigabyte NVIDIA 760 GTX, which is what we've put in this computer, we're getting at least 30 frames per second. And that seems to be the benchmark for fluid frame, frame rate. So obviously the more the better, but at least uh, 30 frames per second seems to be the sweet spot. The second thing we want to talk about really briefly is our center stick mount. So center stick mount is an accessory that we've added to our sim in November. It's standard with all of the sims and it, all it does, it just like the name suggests, allows you to mount your favorite controller between your uh, legs here, uh, our cent center stick. So you get uh, this mounting plate and, and some more hardware so that you can mount a joystick or a controller. It's pre-drilled from the factory for a uh, HOTAS, a uh, Warthog, um, Thrustmaster HOTAS system, uh, Saitec X52 and X65. If you're an old schooler like myself, you may want to fly with a uh, Microsoft joystick here. And I've got a uh, old but good force feedback too from Microsoft that no longer made. This joystick is probably 15 years old and still runs great. The uh, reason I like it so much is because it has force feedback. And uh, in my opinion, that adds a great deal to the sense of immersion and realism. So um, that's something that maybe if you happen to come across one from eBay or a used one, I would recommend that you, that you get one if you don't have one already. If you're using this kind of joystick, you can also use your throttle panel um, or throttle quadrant on the right hand side from Cytec. So you can still have your uh, yoke, you can still have your uh, throttle quadrant and it all works um, interchangeably, if you will. So you can have both of those set up. So we talked about the center mount. Uh, it's fully adjustable up and down, forward and aft. Uh, I'm not gonna maybe show all the, all the mounting, but you can imagine, you know, this plate, as you can see, slides forward and back and, and up and down, and you can and get it to place and then cinch it. If you don't need it, you can remove it always uh, and then put it aside and um, that kind of a thing. Again, rudder pedals you can still use, even if you have the joystick with a rudder axis, because what you could do, like I did here, is you can reprogram the rudder axis so you can look left and right. I think that's a really good feature because what you essentially you can do is, <clears throat> you know, well, why don't I just show you? If you are, for instance, flying and you're on a downwind, you want to see where you are with respect to the runway, you can use that. So we're going to take off here. I'm going to make sure I've got my landing light on, strobe, nav. Well, I don't need the nav lights, but we've got strobes on and, and beacon on and landing lights on. We've got a gear down. Let's see, one notch of flaps from takeoff. We're using <clears throat> this really great Lancer Legacy airplane, uh, which is a, uh, uh, it's got a really great flight dynamic. Um, let's see what else. Um, <clears throat> well, why don't we just make sure there's nobody on final here and let's take off and I'll show you how this whole setup works. So you can use either the Cytec, I'm going to use the Cytec throttle, or you can use the one on your joystick. Again, you can use them together. Um, we're using the uh, add-on scenery from uh, Real Environment and uh, the Real Weather. Um, some substitute textures to make that Flight Sim X a little bit more, I don't know, polished, if you will. 
a lot of people are asking us, you know, what sim we're using. We're using just Microsoft Flight Simulator X. I know there's many, well, two other choices at least. You can use a uh, X-Plane or you can use Prepare 3D for uh, non-entertainment uses. If you are, say, uh, uh, using that for high, for, for uh, education or for, or for professional training, you could buy a license for that. But, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator X, especially with all the add-ons and everything, still seems to be still seems to be doing very well. As you can see, the simulation is pretty fluid. Uh, getting in this very busy environment here, at least 30 frames per second. And we're still using the Cytec flight instrument panels. So I'm just going to do a quick, quick hop around the pattern. The other thing I want to just give a disclaimer to everybody is we've been getting uh, in our vid uh, in our videos some people are questioning us whether we are doing everything by the book, you know, whether we fly in the airplane with the right communications, whether we're doing this and that. And obviously, we're not doing that because that's not the intent of the video. We are not uh, flight instructors, and we're just showing you how you could use this sim. Uh, for practice, maybe with a flight instructor, or maybe you are a flight instructor and you want to just use this for a non-loggable time for your students, or maybe you're an educator, uh, a high school uh, instructor that want to get kids interested in aviation. So we are not showing you how to fly an airplane, showing more maybe the capabilities. And as you can see, uh, the capabilities with the modern day technology and the price of everything coming down so much are pretty good. It's pretty, really pretty immersive and, and pretty, pretty realistic. Uh, so, I, we appreciate all these comments, but please understand that we're not trying to teach you how to fly an airplane in these videos. As you can see, there's a lot of pretty detailed scen scenery uh, in Cleveland here, and as you can see, the frame rates are still very good. We have it set on unlimited frame rates, and again, it's, it's, and, and the details and everything on a very high settings and. As you can see, we're still getting a, a pretty good, pretty good frame rates. And again, we're not doing all the checklists and flying by the book. I'm kind of flying it actually pretty sloppily here, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you, uh, you know, how the sim looks from the pilot view, I guess, because a lot of our videos we're looking at the hardware, not necessarily at just showing you how the sim looks uh, on the monitor. So hopefully that was that was helpful. So thank you again for your comments. Visit us on volairsim.com, send us your comments and emails, or give us a call, uh, and uh, look forward to, uh, to hearing from everyone. Thank you.